Hello, Mr. 13 here. Welcome back to my Spore Vehicle Spotlight. And today, we're going through the Armored Vehicle. So let's start off with some tanks. First off, I have the T-62 somewhere. Where is it? Uh, can you all see it? Must be this one. It's calling it the tank, Mark 1. But, um, basically, uh, I'm using this as the T-62 because after checking it out, that's what I think it most resembles. And basically, the T-62 uh, is a Soviet tank, was first produced, or actually it was made between the, day, the dates of 1961 and, 19, and 1975. Um, no, it was a further development of the T-55, which is an earlier Soviet tank. And to see an actual model of the T-62, it would have five pairs of rubber-tired road wheels here on the side. Now, a quick um, little bit of information about tank uh, wheels and how they work is ordinarily, let's get in close, ordinarily you have rather large wheels that are the easiest to spot that actually make contact with the ground, um, you know, between the, uh, the, gr the, the ground, the tread, and the actual wheel, okay? And these are called the road wheels. Okay, the typical typical name of them is road wheels, and like I said, the T62 would ordinarily have five on a side of these road wheels, and then at the top part of the tank tread um, are what are called the drive wheels. Okay, and they're usually slightly smaller than the road wheels. Like 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 with the name, I mean drive wheels. You kind of get the idea of what their function is, and then all along the top. Um, usually close to the same number uh, as they have of road wheels. They have a very small wheel that's called the return wheel and basically forms the uh, the entire shape of the tank tread and it's typical that unlike here with these giant wheels you see on each side um, it would be more of an angular look with a slightly larger top section than the bottom section that contacts the ground. So just a quick little bit of information about tanks. And these tanks, uh, tanks you see on the tank, uh, back here would typically be fuel tanks. Uh, most often that's what that would be. And you'd see here the main gun provides the majority of the firepower for a tank. This is the turret which is able to spin around and face different directions in order to fire. And typically you'd sometimes have the secondary gun up here at the top and that's usually used against infantry um, because it's not quite so practical to continually have to um, aim this giant gun at individual soldiers. It would usually be fired at other tanks, uh, standing targets, and you could use it against uh, groups of enemies, but like I said, typically you'd use your secondary uh, weapons in order to take out individual soldiers. And uh, another significant fact is that basically with a tank, what you have is a moving tank of fuel. Um, I mean, you can think of tank in that way is that uh, you, you need a lot of fuel to run a machine like this. So the actual fuel tank of a tank is, is very large and takes up a big portion of the inner parts of the tank. And then you have the armor, the tank treads, the turret, and you know, the small section where the operators of the tank are actually located. And here you would see this would actually be the place where they'd be seeing or looking out of the tank. So, just some extra information and next let's move to the T-80. The T-80U main battle tank, this is a Soviet design and um, it was first put into service in 1976 and variants of the T-80 continue to be produced to this day. And where I said the T-62 would have five pairs, the T-80 would have six pairs of forged steel aluminum rubber tired road wheels. And again, with the sport creator, um, you can only do so much. So 
these these aren't going to be things you're going to see in the models. But as far as the other features of this design that the uh, well nuked 92 made, I mean this is pretty spot on stuff. I mean he's got the uh, the hatch where you'd get in and out of the tank in the right place, and um, these are actually extra armored plates because, like I said, the they they took earlier designs and armored it up, you know, made a better tank with other additions to the original design and again we have back here the two barrels which would typically be fuel. Next we have the Merkava 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 Mark IV. Alright and this is an Israeli tank. The Merkava, the original Merkava, not the Mark IV, first entered service in 1978 for the Israel Defense Forces. Um, now the Mark IV is the most recent upgrade of the Merkava and has been in development since 1999. And as you can see with this model of it, it has a very low pro profile of the turret. It's a very long turret. It takes up most of the actual um, body uh, of the tank. You can see it goes most of the length of it. And they have the overall shape pretty close, pretty right on. It's a very odd shaped turret. And pretty sure it has two hatches, just like uh, they made here in the model. And see, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Looks like they have uh, the little places where you'd see out of right up here. Um, secondary gun. But pretty close to the uh, Israeli tank. We did very good, Nuke 92. Very good job. And we go to the Leopard 2A5. And they have no information in their description, which is fine because I came prepared. The Leopard 2 first entered service in 1979 for the German Army. So this would be uh, the West German Army because at the time East Germany and West Germany hadn't uh, rejoined each other and various versions of the Leopard 2 have served in the armed forces of Germany and 12 other countries as well as several non-European nations and the Leopard 2 should have seven road wheels and they did very well with the hatches here if you've seen one of these from above in photographs or uh, Google images or anything like that this is really close to the actual uh, look of the turrets pretty spot on and it even has these um, not actually sure what these are uh, but they are a feature of the tank if you've seen one um, let's see yeah the overall turret shape and everything real good again we have the low profile um, rather than being a bubble which just makes for a better target as with earlier tanks like say from World War II um, a lot of countries have gone into flatter more angular um, shapes and their tanks and this basically deflects uh, fire or deflects munitions or um, RPGs or whatever might happen to hit it helps deflect it rather than having a flat target which is gonna have to bear the full brunt force of that impact when you have angular um, shapes on your um, vehicles it's more likely to deflect it and you, you don't have to rely solely on the thickness or hardness of the actual armor and the Leopard 2, um, more than 3,480 have been man manufactured of the Leopard 2. So like I said, it's um, in countries more than just Germany, some European and also non-European countries. Next, we go to the K2 Black Panther. Okay, so this, um, in the description says it's an advanced main battle tank which will replace the Patton tanks and complement the K-1 series of battle tanks currently fielded by the Republic of Korea. That's pretty much right off the wiki. Um, Full-scale mass production is expected to start in 2009. Well, we're past 2009, so it's already taking place. Now, a little bit of extra information that I got off the wiki that they did not have. Um, the actual tanks that it's, it's talked about replacing are the M48 patents 
Patton tanks, M48s, which um, are basically American tanks of an older style that uh, I believe even the Americans were not even using. So the Republic of Korea, which is South Korea, um, is replacing the old style American tanks and complementing their K1s with these K2 Black Panthers. The Black Panthers, yes, Black Panthers. And um, also, uh, this tank, it features state-of-the-art technology. And it's actually the world's most expensive tank, even in the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, it's a uh, cost of about 8.5 million US dollars per unit. So, very expensive tank here. Now let's go to some American vehicles. This is the M60 Patton. And as you heard, I was mentioning the M48 Patton. And I don't actually have any um, uh, models that are meant to be the M48. This is the M60. So M60 was first introduced in 1960. I don't know if there's any significance of those two numbers, but um, it, it was widely used by the United States and its Cold War allies. Um, Egypt is currently the world's largest operator, having 1,700 upgraded M60A3s, and followed by Turkey with 900 upgraded units, and finally Israel is third with over 700 units of Israeli variant. Now, this is a pretty um, unique uh, design that it's easy to tell that it's an M60. If you look at a side on, I mean, you have the main tank body, the turret, and then this like mini turret kind of thing going on. And basically you have the main gun and then a secondary weapon up here on this second bulb or bulge or whatever you got there. So it, um, like I said, it's very easy to see this and know what it is versus uh, other tanks. Now we go to the, I don't know, one of my favorites, probably a lot of people's favorites. This is the M1A1 Abrams. A famous American tank. Put this into a lot of uh, combat situations. Now they have a lot of extra little doodads and stuff on their um, their model here, complete with flashing lights. And um, I can't say how much of this up here is accurate, but as far as the overall body shape, um, it's pretty right on. Uh, the front part of the a Abrams is wider than the back part of the turret. The front part of the turret's wider than the back, um, and it's very um, straight edges on this back part. And they have the little, I guess, for a car you may say the grill or the bumper or whatever. Um, I can't remember the term, but overall, uh, very good shapes on this Abrams. It's pretty spot on to uh, an actual one. And like I've said before, the the treads are off, and that's just because of the limitations of these four um, vehicle making. Okay, so it should have seven, um, seven road wheels. Now the Abrams production started in 1985 and continued to 1992. And the actual M1 Abrams, um, not the M1A1, but the M1 Abrams was first made in 1980. So I take it the M1A1 started in 1985. And about 4,976 have been built for the U.S. Army with another 221 for the U.S. Marines and also 755 for Egypt. And again with the Abrams you see the, the lower profile turret and also a very large turret. This is, I mean com compared to the Merkava, I mean the Merkava and the Abrams both have just enormous turrets that take up most of the body of the tank. And now we've um, gone through the tanks. I'd like to feature just a few of what are called armored personnel carriers. And you might get a first look at this and think, oh, you know, it's another tank. But actually, this is classified as 
a type of armored personnel carrier. This is the M3 Bradley or M3 Bradley fighting vehicle and it's a tracked armored vehicle. It's classified as an armored reconnaissance and scout vehicle. It often occupies infantry squads into combat and it's equipped with a 25 millimeter cannon and anti-tank missiles seen here. Um, also has two four-barreled grenade launchers for creating defensive smoke screens, chaff, and flares. Now when this vehicle was fielded in I believe the 1991 Persian Gulf War, uh, these Bradleys were actually more successful at taking out enemy vehicles than even the M1A1 Abrams. So even though it's meant mostly for reconnaissance and carrying soldiers, um, it's still a very, very formidable vehicle. And lastly, we'll see the M113 APC, as it says there, Armored Personnel Carrier. And um, again, this is spore, so you're not going to see an identical um, identical model to what it would look like in real life, but I felt this was pretty close facsimile. Um, again here in the rear, you see this is basically the door. This is where the soldiers would enter and exit the vehicle. And you have here the angular front which is to deflect fire and overall boxy design. I mean it's a box on tank treads basically. And you see a uh, weapon here. I'm not sure what caliber or what type of weapon that would be. But here's the also um, oh hatch. Okay, so the M113 is a fully tracked armored personnel carrier. It has formed the backbone of the United States mechanized infantry from the time of its first fielding in Vietnam in April 1962. And um, the Army's heavy brigade combat teams are currently equipped with around 6,000 M113s and about 4,000 of the M3 Bradleys. Uh, maybe also M2 Bradleys, but M3. I know for, for a fact it's talking about their 4,000 Bradleys, so between M2s and M3s. And like I said, 6,000 of these boxes here. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode on the armored vehicles. I threw tanks in with the APCs basically because of the numbers of each that I could find and I felt these were the best um, examples of each to give a real grasp on the difference between um, the tanks and the armored personnel carriers. I hope you uh, will stick around for the next episode. Uh, secret, um, I don't know what it is. I actually know but uh, you all won't know until I actually release the next episode so I hope you Tune in to find out what it is. Thank you for joining me and take care.